Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about one of our containers inside of C++, and that's going to be the std span. Now, up until this point, we've been largely looking at containers that own the underlying memory. So for example, we looked at things like std vector, which will do dynamic allocations for us, as well as free that memory when we're done with it. And we've also looked at uh, a few different kinds of smart pointers. So we looked at things like std unique pointer or std shared pointer that we give ownership over, say, some piece of memory that we've allocated. And those pointers become responsible for freeing that memory when we're done with it. Now, there are times where we want the nice abstractions of a container, but we don't necessarily want ownership of the underlying memory. So for example, we may just want to look at a subset of a vector. So just maybe some of the elements of a vector, but we don't want to actually own that memory inside of a new container. We just want to kind of uh, look into our vector. Now, the way that we do that in modern C++, you know, starting from C++ 20 at least, is through this std span. So the std span describes an object that can refer to a contiguous sequence of objects with the first element starting at zero, and it can be either a static extent or a dynamic extent. So basically, the std span gives us a way to look into or have a reference to uh, some sequence of objects, but without actually owning the underlying memory. So we can look at a subset of a vector without owning uh, that memory that we're looking at. So let's go and see how we can use uh, the basics of using this std span and why it can be kind of helpful. So let's get started here, and we'll create a new file called, say, span.cpp. And inside of here, we'll include a few headers. So we'll include something like uh, IO streams. So we can do some printing. And we'll also include span here. So you can see from CPP reference, unsurprisingly, std span is defined in the header span. And then we can also include something like vector that we've seen before. So, you know, an example of where we might use span is if you want to look at a subset of a vector without actually owning that memory. So let's create a main function, core of our C++ programs. And let's say we want to implement a simple function that prints out a subset of our vector here. So for example, um, let's go ahead and kind of write the shell of this. So void return type, it's just a print function. It doesn't need to return anything. We can call this function something like print sub vector. And then it's going to take some parameter here. And we're going to print out, say, you know, part of a vector. Now, one thing we could, of course, do is, you know, just pass, say, our vector uh, by reference here. Make sure there's no copy going on. So we could just pass a std vector of integer, say, uh, by reference and call this vector. But then we need to say, you know, what part of vector do we want to actually print out? So one thing we could do is we could just print out an endpoint that we want to uh, print out. So for example, we could pass some integer end that represents the last element what we want to print out. So maybe we just want to print from the beginning of our vector to some end point, or maybe we want to pass both a beginning and end point of our vector that we want to print out. Or we could just pass, say, you know, a pair of iterators uh, from our vector that represents the beginning and end we want to print. But you know, what you see here is now we've wound up with, say, two or three parameters that we're passing uh, to this function. So we're not really expressing, say, the range or contiguous range of values that we want to print all that well. And especially with passing, say, this container vector, right? We know vector to be this dynamically sized container. We don't need the whole vector. We just want kind of a subset of it. So instead of passing, say, a vector and a start and end point or a pair of iterators, what we can instead pass is a std span of, say, integers in this case, right? And we'll just call this span. Now, we can work with a span um, in much the same way we can work with any of our containers. So we can use something like a range-based for loop. So we can say for, you know, auto value inside of our span, we can go ahead and print out this value, this integer, followed by a space and then print out a new line character afterwards, right? So std c out, and then a new line character. And the nice thing about this is that std span is not going to own the underlying memory here. It's just a way of expressing, hey, I want to pass to this function a range of integers. Um, I don't really care where that's coming from. As far as this function is concerned, it's just a range of integers that I'm going to print out. I don't own any of the underlying memory. So it's a better way of kind of expressing our intent here. 
So let's see how this is going to look from just, say, a calling point of view. So how do we actually call, say, a function um, that takes the std span as a parameter? So let's start by creating, of course, a vector, right? Something that we want to take a subset of. So we can create a std vector here of integers, and we'll call it something like my vector. And here, um, we'll just set it equal to some ascending values, say 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we have a vector with five elements inside of it. OK, and from there, we can go ahead and call our function here, this print sub vector. So a nice thing about kind of modern C++ and this idea of ranges. So remember when we looked at std sort um, and this std ranges sort, we could just treat our vector as a range of values. And our range of values can be converted into a span. So I'm not copying my vector inside of this function. I'm just looking into the contents with this std span. So if we go ahead and take a look at std span and say the different constructors, you can see down here that our std span can take you know, we can create it using a range of values here. So number seven in this list. So that's a very nice thing we can do. We can just pass, say, a vector if we want to just print out the entire vector, but without copying it. So let's go ahead and save this and compile it. So we'll save it, and then we can run this through G++. So span.cpp, call the output executable span. And then we'll set the standard equal to C++20, since this is a very modern feature. And you'll need a new compiler um, or relatively new compiler if you want to use this. So we'll go ahead and compile this. Right? We have our executable span here. And let's go ahead and run it. And you can see that we took as our span, you know, the full um, vector of integers here. Now, we didn't copy that vector. We're just looking into that vector. Um, we're treating it as a span of values. Our span doesn't own uh, this underlying memory. We're just kind of looking at it through this container. Okay. So let's look at how we can say, look at a subset of our vector instead. So in this case, instead of passing our vector as a range of values here, let's create a std span that we're going to pass. So I can just do std span and I can say the starting point for my span. So I can say, you know, my vector dot begin. And then I can say how many elements I want to have in the span. So I can say, you know, just two elements. So starting from begin of my vector, I want two elements. So I'm passing, you know, one and two basically as a span to my print sub vector here. Now remember, span doesn't own this memory, but span is just going to see, you know, a span of two elements here. Okay, so we can go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and recompile our program with C20 and run it. So you can see with print vector, we printed a subset of our vector now. So one and two, but we didn't have to do any nasty business up here inside of our print sub vector function in terms of figuring out the range of values to print, right? That was all figured out for us from creating this span um, when we were calling this function, right? Our function itself doesn't need to know the details about where the span is coming from. And of course, we don't have to just say print um, starting from the beginning of our vector. So we can do, you know, the beginning of our vector and some offset. So let's print out kind of the middle three elements of this vector. So starting at begin plus one, so that'll be this uh, two uh, number. And then we're going to print out three elements here. So two, three, and four, right? That'll be the span of elements that we're going to see inside of this print sub vector. Okay, so we can go ahead and save this and we can recompile with C++20, of course, and run it. You can see we printed out that sub vector, this two, three, and four. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this episode. It's a brief introduction to using std span and some of the benefits, right? Sometimes we just want this container level abstraction um, without owning the underlying memory. And we can get that nice abstraction here using a std span. So we no longer have to keep track of, say, uh, starting and end points inside of our our functions here that take a std span, they can just take this kind of abstract span. And at the call site, we can determine uh, or set kind of the span of elements we want to pass to this function. But like I said, that's going to do it for today. I'll put links down to, say, std span and this uh, information about the constructor of std span below the video. And you can find this and any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. That's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.